You are looking at the distribution of grades in an exam, but not just any exam, let's take my most difficult exam of the Bachelor Education, Thermodynamics. Then you plot some bar charts to get a sense of the distribution, try to fit a function, but well then you see there are two Gaussians at the same time. Welcome to Gaussian Mixture Models. Hi, welcome to a new video. Today we want to look at Gaussian mixture models. For this I will give an intuition and then we will see how it is implemented in TensorFlow probability. So in the intro we looked at the distribution of grades for a particular hard exam. And we saw that there are two peaks in our distribution. And that is also the reason we call it a multimodal distribution. I mean, we can't model this with a regular Gaussian anymore. I mean, regular Gaussian only has one peak, only one mode. So because here we have two peaks at the same time. So in one distribution, that's what I mean by at the same time. And this is extremely handy because based on the peaks, we can derive or kind of see a clustering of our data. And in our case, it's fairly simple. I mean, in the first cluster, we have the students that passed the exam. And in the second cluster, we have the students that almost failed or failed the exam. And Gaussian mixture models provide us with a really handy tool to perform these kind of clusterings on a wide variety of data. Here we are looking at the univariate case, so when the grade is just a scalar value, but the Gaussian mixture models can also be extended to multivariate distributions or multivariate cases, and there they prove extremely handy. But what does it mean to have two Gaussians at the same time? For this I will take a copy of our original plot and take two copies, and for the first I will remove the second peak, and for the second I will remove the first peak. And then we see we have two distributions. For the first, for the students that passed, we have a white Gaussian, let's say, at centered at 2.8. And for the students that failed, we have a narrow Gaussian at, let's say, 4.8. And you could ask yourself, well, is it just the superposition of those two? So if we add those both up, are we getting like our true distribution of the crates. And for this, let us assess it in another plot. And we have our crates x and here our p of x. And I will plot the two distributions in this one plot. And for this, let us start with first the distribution of students that passed the exam. Let's call this p1 of x. Then let's get a distribution of students that failed the exam. And let's call this p2 of x. And by a superposition, we could then ask ourselves, is p of x not just p1 of x plus p2 of x? But if you look at it like this, then you will soon see that this violates the normalization that those probability density functions have to adhere to. So it violates normalization. And this is because the first distribution has to integrate to 1 and the second has to integrate to 1. And if we add them, then the full distribution would add up to 2. Well, it's no longer probability density function. So we kind of have to introduce mixing coefficients. And let's say for our full distribution, we mix let's say 0.4 times the first distribution and 0.6 times the second distribution. We will call them pi. Pi 1 is 0.4 and pi 2 is 0.6. And then p of x is pi 1 times p1 of x plus pi 2 p2 of x. And well, then we have a full probability density function. But this might remind you of something now. If you watch my videos on mixture distribution, then this is nothing else than a marginal for a mixture distribution. So let's write this down. Isn't it just the marginal of a mixture distribution? 
And that's correct. I mean, we are looking at Gaussian mixture models and Gaussian mixture models are a special case of mixture distributions. So Gaussian mixture models are a special case of mixture distributions. And then these pi values would remind you of categorical distribution because these are the parameters for a categorical distribution. So then let's look at, if it's a mixture distribution, then let's look at a directed graphical model. And a directed graphical model will look as follows. So we, of course, have some observed nodes and these observed nodes are the axes, the crates that we observe. And the axes, of course, I mean the parameters of a Gaussian, they depend on a mu and they depend on a sigma. And since we have more than one Gaussian, we have to find, have to, we need an array of parameters, so a vector that is entering it. And then there is the association with one of the two classes. So this is the set and this is latent because, I mean, surely we know which student passed or failed an exam, but think of it as a clustering task. So we just are getting crates and we have to find the cluster of students that passed and the cluster of students that failed. So we initially don't know which crate belongs to either pass or fail. And we would find some sort of a soft clustering with our Gaussian mixed model. And the set is taking the parameter, the pi vector, which is nothing else than the parameter for its categorical because set or the class, or let's write this down first, set is the class or cluster that our crate belongs to of the crate. So in our case, pass fail and X is the crate itself. And if we look at how they are modeled, then we see set is modeled as a categorical with the pi vector parameter and X is modeled according to a normal with the mu vector accessed at the set position and the sigma vector accessed at the set position too. Because um, if a crate belongs to one in the set class, so zero or the first class, then we either need the zero or the first um, mu and sigma respectively. Um, for the sake of completion, um, there is an equivalent way of model this, modeling this, because right now in our parameters, we looked at vectors, but we can also, of course, use plate notation. So we have a latent set and we have an observed X and we have a pi D, so the D of entry in our pi vector, and we have a mu D, the D of entry in our mu vector, and a sigma d, the div entry in our sigma vector, and the arrows stay the same, but instead of writing them as a vector with an underscore, I will put a plate around it and mark a d here, because d is the number, number of classes. And lastly, we can factorize the joint by our graphical model and we would get the probability of z and x. So the probability that our crate belongs to a certain class and is the crate itself. And this is given as p of z times p of x given z according to the graphical model. And the first is nothing else than our categorical modeled with the pi vector. And the second is our normal distribution with the mu vector, but indexed at the set position. And this makes sense because our mu vector is a d-dimensional vector and with the angular brackets, I mean indexed because depending on the class we are in, we have to change the parameters of our normal. And the same is for the sigma. And if we then plug in the definition of the categorical and the normal, we get for the categorical, it is the product from d0 to capital D minus one over pi d, the d entry of the pi vector, raised to the indicator function that set is d. And the normal will be one over 
sigma and instead of writing a notation with accessing the sigma vector at the set position, we can also use sigma index set, so the set entry of the sigma vector times square root of 2 pi times the exponential of minus 1 over 2 sigma set squared times x minus mu set in brackets squared closing brackets for the exponent. Okay, lastly, let us check how it is implemented in TensorFlow probability. For this, I am in an interactive Python session with the packages already loaded. And let us first define the parameters of our Gaussian mixture model. So we have to define the pi vector, the mu vector, and the sigma vector. And I will call this pi cluster. And this will be a TF constant. And we said there is a 40% chance to belong to the first cluster and a 60% chance to belong to the second cluster. Then we have to define the mu's. And we said we have a distribution centered around, let's say, 2.8. And the other one was centered around 4.8. And then we have to define the sigmas. And for this, we will use, for the first, it was a wider distribution. Let's say it is 0 0.6 sigma. And for the second, it was a more narrow distribution, let's say 0.3. Okay, then we can first create the cluster distribution. And as we are in a mixture model, this will be a categorical distribution and the probability of it will be the pi cluster. And we give it a name, cluster. Then we can look at it and we see cluster distribution is a categorical, it has no batch shape, no event shape, and if we query it, for instance, like a sample, then we get a 1, so we have a sample that belongs to the first class, and we can sample it 10 times, then we have 0 of class, first class, I mean, we only have two classes here. Then let's define the crate distribution, and for this we will use a batched normal, so we will provide the normal with a vector argument so that we have two normals that are evaluated in parallel. And we provide it with the location, which will be our mu's, and the scale, which will be our sigmas. And the name of the distribution is crate. And if we look at it, then we see it is a normal, but it has a batch shape of two. So it is evaluating two parameters at the same time. And if we were to sample it once, then we would also get two samples, one for the distribution of the students that passed and one of the distribution where the students failed. And I mean, these kind of values, they kind of coincide with this idea. Okay, now let's look at how the mixture model would work in, in theory. So for instance, if you were to sample our mixture model, we would, for instance, yeah, sample our cluster distribution. Let's say we sample it 10 times. Then we get what we had before, then a crate that belongs to the failed cluster, past cluster, failed cluster, and so on. And we would also query our crate distribution 10 times. And then we would choose the entry of this based on the cluster it belongs to. So we said that the first sample belongs to the first cluster. And so here we would take the second entry. And then we have uh, the second sample belongs to the zero of cluster, so we would take the zero of entry, and so on and so forth. But since the cluster itself is latent, this is not available to us if we were to have a data set. I mean, if you would get the crate distributions um, and your task is to cluster them, then you don't know which cluster they belong to. That's the task of clustering. And this is abstracted by the usage of a mixture model, which we will use to create our Gaussian mixture. And for this, we will use, I will quickly clean the screen. And here we will use the mixture same family because um, all the components distributions will be normal. And for this, we have to define the mixture distribution, which is our cluster distribution. And we have to define the components distributions. And for this, we will use the crate distributions. And then we have our Gaussian mixture. And if we, we can look at it and see it has no batch shape, no event shape anymore, makes sense because the crate distribution is a scalar value. And if we query it, 
for instance, 10 times, then we get 10 samples. And now we don't know which cluster they belong to. I mean, we can still kind of guess, but um, it's at least the data set that we would be yeah, provided with. But I think it's really interesting to now look at the probability density function. And for this, I will um, plot it. And for we need two packages for it. First, we need NumPy. And I will plot with the help of Plotly. And we need Plotly Express. Then let's create an array of x values. And for instance, let them vary from 0 to 6. And let's take 100 samples. And y will be our Gaussian mixture model queried probability. Again, this will be the marginal probability, but mm, the mixture model is di da doing this for us under the hood. And query it on the x values. And we need the NumPy because this would return a TensorFlow tensor. And we would stay in the NumPy world right now. And then we can create a figure. And this will be px dot line because we want a line plot and x is x y is y and then we have our figure and i will because i mean dark mode everything i will just quickly change to the dark plot leaf theme in order for it to be more visually friendly and then we can take a look at it and it will open up a web browser and here we see our distribution and this is getting close to what we have um, f looked at earlier. So we have the two peaks here and the first seeing that is centered out 0.8. So we have a high percentage here with um, students getting a medium grade, but um, past the exam. And then there is the big, um, the big peak for the students that failed the exam. Okay. That's it for the Gaussian mixture model. I hope that together with the TensorFlow probability example, it makes sense how they work under the hood. There is another task to infer the parameters from data, but we will look at this in a future video. Thanks for watching today. Here you will see similar videos. See you next time.